I'm Mike. I trained at UCLA Med School and am now an anesthesiology resident in New York City. Over the last seven years, I've helped pre-meds just like you get into medical school. And these are the four brutally honest truths that your upperclassmen and pre-med counselors should have told you. Brutally honest truth number one, assuming what medical schools want to see is a very dangerous assumption. With that being said, there are a couple of core medical school fundamentals that you cannot get wrong. All medical schools care about strong stats, impact, and narrative. Let's start with stats, your GPA and your MCAT score. Yes, you live in a world now where medical school admissions is holistic, but too many pre-meds misinterpret what holistic means. It does not mean that you will get into medical school with a 2.97 GPA and a 498 on the MCAT. Holistic admissions means that your stats are still necessary, but alone they are not enough. Please do not get that wrong and overlook any part of your application, much less your stats. Misunderstanding holistic admissions is a first class ticket on the train of rejection. Second, impact. The most predictive factor that a pre-med will become an excellent medical student is whether that pre-med was excellent during their pre-med years. It's not a stretch to think that excellent pre-meds become excellent medical students. If you've made an impact connecting 725 immigrants, immigrants like Farmer Nan who just came from Vietnam, connecting them to insurance and primary care doctors by fundraising $21,732 through 12 funding bodies, you're a pretty safe bet that in medical school, you will continue to be excellent and continue to make significant impacts in the community. And more than that, I hope you heard just how convincing real patient stories, like not real numbers, $21,732, 12 funding bodies, 725 immigrants, I hope you see just how convincing that evidence is. These quantitative and qualitative pieces of evidence prove to medical schools that you've made a real difference. And this is way different than the typical generic mediocre pre-med approach. Oftentimes there are no numbers, no patient stories, and every description reads like a resume. We all know what medical assistants do. We all know what scribes and hospital volunteers do. We are more interested in the impact that you had. So get out of extracurriculars that are siphoning your time if you are not making a difference. I really don't care if you're the president or you've put three years and 3,500 hours into it or it's the most unique extracurricular that I have never heard of before. Bottom line is no impact, no matter. I myself spent over 340 hours in hospital volunteering. For all of those 340 hours, they didn't spend 3.4 seconds on it. And look, I get it. When I was a pre-med, I thought medical schools wanted to prove my commitment. It was totally normal to start at the bottom of the totem pole. Maybe these are phrases that you've heard before, and I hope that you can see just how dangerous it is to assume what medical schools want to see. Ultimately, it drives you to make decisions in your pre-med journey that make you less competitive after spending more time. That is super frustrating and more importantly is a formula for failure. So if your hospital volunteering or any extracurricular is anything like my hospital volunteering, where all I did was transfer phone calls or wipe down high touch areas, there is no impact. Every pre-med is also doing it. And even if I had hundreds or thousands of hours doing it, no impact, no matter. Impact over everything. There's a reason some clubs on campus are very competitive to get into. They have structured inherent impact built into them. And because that impact is so valuable, you're going to have to fight for those spots. I was rejected by the UCLA Student Stroke Team, a club that offers clinical experience and clinical research in the emergency department. I applied over seven times over three years. I never got in, and that's okay. While they can be helpful, you don't need one specific club to get in. You're smart, and you can work hard enough to pave your way to an acceptance without relying on one single opportunity. We talked about stats, we talked about narrative, and lastly, there's theme. Harvard says they're trying to build a diverse orchestra of the most world-class pre-meds there are. And so it must be crystal clear on your application who you are and what medical schools will get if they accept you. 
Are you going to be the next leader in biotech, the political advocate that campaigns for transparent patient billing, the community health expert that revamps public health service offerings throughout the state, the next award-winning filmmaker that creates a documentary on shady pharmaceutical practices, or the importance of primary care medicine? Whatever you decide, and you can see that there are infinite numbers of possibilities, it must be clear and it must be world-class. And if you don't do that, then medical schools will have no idea who they're getting or they'll know for sure that they're getting a generic mediocre pre-med. Your application will fade away into the abyss of other generic mediocre applications. There's nothing worse than being forgettable in medical school admissions. Brutal honest truth number two, it only takes one singular mistake. You can have a fantastic application overall, but there are just far too many competitive pre-meds nowadays to make a huge mistake. We're in 2024 now. You can't get into medical school with a firm handshake and a nice smile. Even if most of your application is strong, you cannot get away with a weak letter of recommendation, a terrible interview showing, a lack of clinical exposure, an institutional action demonstrating loose morals or questionable ethics. So I reject the idea that a single standout factor, a single spike can get you into medical school. Today, I believe that you must be both well-rounded and have some clear standout factor. Your letters of recommendation cannot be lukewarm and they certainly can't work against you. You must be prepared for your interview. Know your application better than anyone else in the world. And you cannot convey an air of disrespect, self-entitlement, and cockiness. You cannot afford to give medical schools a reason to reject you. That's how competitive admissions is today. And look, I hope it's clear that getting into medical school is not easy. Every aspect is so important and there are so many ways to make the wrong decision. This is why we built the Pre-Med Catalyst Mentorship Program. We recognized that pre-meds needed and wanted guidance through all of these important parts of their journey. With support through each and every critical decision on the way to building a competitive application. If any of that sounds helpful, the link in the description box below is to find out more. Medical school admissions is not a surprise, and if you don't know, it's your fault. Medical school admissions is nearly the same every single year. Many timelines are replicable, many of the secondary questions are carbon copies of each other, and the entire process has been largely the same for decades. If you don't know what to expect, that speaks more about you than the process itself. For example, I've done hundreds of pre-med mock interviews, and I cannot tell you the number of times I ask two questions that should be universal and pre-meds are surprised. I'll ask, so why did you decide to go into medicine? Or why do you wanna to come to this program? And if you're not prepared for these questions or you're surprised that I even asked them, that lack of preparation says nothing good about you. Another example of medical school admissions not being this secret, well-kept black box are secondary prompt. Many pre-meds have no idea what they are before they actually apply and get them in their email. And even more pre-meds never think about using them when they're freshmen or sophomores to think about what type of application they have to build. Secondary prompts are literally what medical schools are looking for. They are the final questions they ask you before they decide whether to interview you or not. So use them, even if you're a freshman and sophomore, to figure out exactly what medical schools are looking for and build an application that addresses those exact questions. This is how you become a pre-med that fits a school's mission statement and culture like a perfectly tailored glove. For example, these are the secondary prompts from UCLA. You can find them with a quick Google search. And here, based on the wording, it's clear that UCLA is not only looking for excellent, outstanding physicians. They're looking for that and. You're going to be an outstanding doctor and blank. And that extra scholarly project or volunteer initiative that made a serious difference. Underlying all of this, it's clear that UCLA values different perspectives and diverse backgrounds. They value the people from marginalized communities or those who have serviced them. And to be clear, not all medical schools have the same priorities. Just Google another school's secondaries and you'll see the wording is very different. UCLA though makes it clear exactly who they're looking for. And wouldn't that information be important as a freshman pre-med? We here at Pre-Med Catalyst certainly think so. Now, if you want to see real examples of real successful students who have gotten into medical school in the past, take a look at our application database. 
It features eight entire applications that have gotten into schools like UCLA, UCSF, and USC. All of them are available for free in the link in the description box below in our application database. Brutally honest truth number four. Sleep more than you study, study more than you party, and party as much as you can. Balance matters as a pre-med. You can take your personal journey seriously, and yes, you don't have to sacrifice your personal life in the process, especially if you make the right decisions along the pre-med path. You can have it all, and people who say that you can't either have not done it themselves or never believe that they could. I've seen many thousands of pre-meds be very successful in their professional and personal lives concurrently. And if you've made it to this point in the video, I know that you can too. That's all for me today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.